there, I'm Tia Curtis. Today I want to show you how I like to make bias with my adorable little Alessio travel iron and these clover bias makers. Bias is fabric that's cut on the bias in very narrow strips and then when you pull it through these little makers it folds in on itself. I use bias for lots of things, including stems in my big applique pieces, as well as just making little narrow lines on quilt blocks. This is kind of a new project I'm working on. So let me tell you a little bit about this iron. It is absolutely adorable. You can just tell that by looking at it. So if really cute notions are important to you, um, this is the one. So I have a cat walking around the studio. He's very mad because he moved a bunch of his things. So, sorry. Not sorry, because this is his house. So this iron is made by Oliso. And Oliso makes this very cool larger iron that stands up when you're not using it. It's very awesome. I had one once and it was the bee's knees. I loved it. But now I have this little one. So I've been doing a lot of traveling this year to teach and this is the little thing I take with me. It gets incredibly hot, which is very important for me. I love a hot steamy iron and this one does the trick. There's a little water reservoir back here. It doesn't hold a heap of water, but it holds enough. This thing is important because when I'm downstairs in my sewing studio, I just have it hanging up. <laughs> I have it hanging up on the wall so it can be a quilt hanger. And when you're ironing with it, boom, it's a resting thing. You just rest your iron on it. So let me show you how I use the iron when we're making bias, okay? So how do you make bias? Bias is not hard at all to make. You can make a whole bunch of it out of just a simple fat quarter. Fat quarter, boom. You just need to fold the fabric so it's on the bias. Just fold yourself a 45 degree angle. The 45 degree angle looks like this. So this is the corner. I folded it over. I've got a nice bias line. And now I'm gonna cut that bias line with my rotary cutter and my ruler. And because I've got this little tiny cutting mat, I'm gonna fold again just so I can use the space I've got. You don't have to do this if you have a big cutting mat and a big ruler, but I have to because mine is small right here. So, I'm just going to cut that folded bit. There we go. And now when I un unfold it, woo, I've got these triangles. And this is the piece that I'm going to cut my bias from. So now that I've cut my initial piece of bias, this is the time when I have to cut strips from it. The two bias makers I have are a third of an inch and a fourth of an inch. These are the two favorite sizes for me. And here's a close up of the third of an inch bias maker and the fourth of an inch bias maker. You'll notice that this one says nine and this one says six. These are my favorite sizes. For the third of an inch bias maker, I need to cut seven, eight inch pieces of fabric. I know that's a weird number, but I promise it works so awesome. So cut your 7 8 inch strips off that bias edge, that diagonal edge that we cut. If you cut it off the straight, it's not going to work right. All right, so I'm just going to cut three. There we go. Now, let me show you how I use the Clover Bias Maker. So to make this bias, you're gonna need a spray starch of some sort. I love this Flatter by, um, it's the, my favorite smell is Yizu. It's my favorite. 
So anyway, just spray that bias with your starch and spray a lot, you know, it's gonna get damp. So it's nice and damp. That's awesome. Now is when the little Olicio comes in. Press just the tips at first. And what's gonna happen is that they're gonna get really stiff and then they'll feed into this bias maker a whole lot easier. All right. So I work with the metal side up. Let our iron rest a minute. We're gonna feed our fabric into our bias maker. And if it doesn't feed in well, just hit it with more starch. And here's a close up of me feeding this in. See how nice it slides in? So it's the metal side up, fabric side up, Take a pen and you just pull it through. And you can keep it even in there. Pull it through and look, it's already starting to do its thing. At this point, what I like to do is I like to pin it down, okay? Maybe I'll go ahead and hit it with more starch. Seriously, you're gonna need to use a lot of starch. Now is when the magic's gonna happen. So we're gonna use our iron, this wonderful pointy tip of this Oliso iron. And we're, do you hear that sizzle? So hot. And the starch is making the, the bias have a nice crisp edge. Look how pretty that is already. So if you're gonna be making a whole lot of bias, you can sew all your pieces together and just do one long string of bias. Sometimes I do that if I know I'm gonna be using like big vines or big stems on applique. So I've pinned this end and then I just use the pressure of the iron to press it one more time. And now we're gonna go on and do this other one. So this is a third of an inch piece of bias made from a 7 8 inch piece of fabric cut on the diagonal or cut on the bias. So let me show you some of the cool ways you can use bias. Of course, you can use bias to make stems for like applique flowers and vines, or what I'm doing here is a little more contemporary, a little more modern. I'm experimenting with like well, lines, but I'm using bias to make the lines. So I just have like a simple arc here. Here I have just a circle. I wanted it to be really kind of organic and loose. And with a good bias, you can make some great shapes. So let let me show you how I do it. You just put your bias down, and then as you tug with this hand, you shape, and the bias will just go into any kind of shape you want it to. And I want to experiment kind of with circles. Okay. So it's not, you know, totally perfect right now, but I kind of like that imperfection, that f those funny curves. So at this point what I would do is just snip it. And then I'm going to use this Roxanne glue to glue down my piece. And then if I have my iron handy if I need to add more more heat. So I've already got it in kind of a loose circle shape. 
And this glue, it dries pretty quick and it dries, shoot, almost permanent. So if you want to glue your applique down, you don't have to worry about it, you know, falling off in your sewing bag or at the airport or, you know, wherever you're going to be working on your applique. I love to work on applique when I'm traveling or shoot even in the even in the car if I'm just going somewhere quick. My husband, he always likes to drive, so I just have to sit there and work on something. And applique is the perfect thing for me. All right, so here we go. Smashing down our bias. So you don't need a ton of glue, just a couple dots will do it. And, you know, if you hate the shape you made or you hate the way you did it, it's just glue. You just jerk it up and, and you're done. You can redo it. You know, I can still manipulate it as I'm going to make it look really nice. But see, so you can make really dramatic curves. You can go all the way in circles. You can make loops. You can make just gentle wavy lines. There's a lot you can do with applique that's really, really awesome. So I hope you liked the video on how to make bias with the Aliso iron and bias strips and those clover bias makers. I have an affiliate link to buy this iron for yourself at my website. So just click over to tiacurtisquilts.com, use the link there, get yourself an iron and make so much bias. It'll keep you busy for days.